Over the last year or so, I've had a lot of modern tech-focused espresso machines come across my bar, and even though I've enjoyed them, generally speaking, there is that nagging sense that one small electrical fault could grind everything to a standstill. But the machine we're looking at today only has one moving piece. This is the Nine Barista. It's the brainchild of William Playford, an espresso lover who put their PhD of engineering from the University of Cambridge to proper use, and built as they put it, the world's first jet-engineered stovetop espresso machine, which is aimed at providing the reliable and consistent pressure and temperatures that are essential for producing properly extracted espresso. So today, as you likely already guessed, I'm taking a closer look at the Nine Barista, looking at its unique design, its usability and performance, and of course, its quirks and downsides. But first, in the spirit of full disclosure, the folks over at Nine Barista slid into my DMs and asked if I'd be interested in reviewing their machine. And of course, since I've been looking at it for quite some time, I happily agreed, but not before they agreed to my terms of no access to this video or its contents prior to full public release. But with that out of the way, we're going to dive right into it after a quick word from this video's sponsor, Standart Magazine. If you're into coffee, its culture, and learning about the world around it, Standart Magazine is the perfect addition to your brew bar or coffee table. With quarterly releases, they shed light on issues both inside and outside of the cafe, highlighting people who elevate the industry, and deep dives into new ideas around all things coffee. To sweeten the deal, each issue also includes a sample of coffee from some of the world's best roasters, to give you the full sensory experience. You really can't beat the combination of fresh coffee and fresh print. So head over to standartmag.com prometheus, use the link in the description or code prometheus at checkout to snag $5 off your very own subscription with a money back guarantee. And if you're still on the fence, you can actually try Standart first with just the cost of shipping. There's not a whole lot to lose and a whole lot to gain. Even at just a quick glance, it's pretty clear that this isn't your grandma's old mocha pot, and there's quite a bit more going on here. So let's do a quick overview so we can get more familiar with the Nine Barista and how it works. And since the brewing flows from the bottom up, we're going to start at the base, which acts as the machine's high pressure boiler and where your brew water is pressurized to nine bars as it's heated to 354 degrees. From there, a nine bar spring-loaded valve, the only moving piece in the machine, opens up, allowing the pressure and water to pass through the coiled heat exchanger, which sheds off some heat, taking the water down to 212 degrees, and then lastly through the fin heat exchanger, where it sheds another 13, allowing the 199 degree water and nine bars of pressure to collide with your ground coffee. And much like a standard machine, the Nine Barista has a portafilter that contains a 53mm double espresso basket, designed to hold 18 to 20 grams. And this particular version is the bottomless option, which gives you a fuller view of the extraction than the standard. And finally, as you may have already noticed, in terms of materials, the Nine Barista is almost entirely constructed of nickel-plated brass, with the only exceptions being some wood accents, o-rings, and insulation. As complex as the engineering of the Nine Barista may seem, its overall performance and user experience is very straightforward. When disassembled into its three main parts, it's clear where the water goes, where the coffee goes, and how it all comes together. But there was one small learning curve for me, and that was with heat application. It took a few failed attempts to realize that the heat should be pretty high, at least to start with. For example, the electric burner that I use maxes at about 480 degrees, and this still takes about 5-6 to six minutes to reach full pressure and begin extracting. The first 3-4 to four minutes are pretty mellow, as it's just sort of sitting there, but once steam begins to consistently flow out of the chimney, and the rolling boil inside slowly increases in intensity, you know you're close. It seems to reach a bit of a crescendo, where the boiling sound and steam drops off, the internal 9-bar switch opens, Pressure is then applied upwards to the puck of coffee, and the extraction begins. At that point, I usually dial back the heat a notch or two, keeping track of the amount of liquid in the basin and the time since I saw coffee reach the surface. Once I reach around 20 to 30 seconds, and or 30 to 40 grams of espresso, I pour it into a cup and call it done. Personally, i found if you let it go for too long on the heat, the latter bits of the extraction can be bitter and generally unpleasant. And also, it has a bit of a negative effect on the crema, making it very bubbly and losing that clean, glossy finish. Overall though, I'd say when dialed in, the shots themselves are as good as any straight 9-bar pole I've had out of a pump or lever-driven machine. 
and it seems, generally for espresso, it's relatively forgiving in variances in grind and puck prep. And speaking of puck prep, the optional metal dosing collar is a worthwhile add-on to keep the process tidy, and any manual hand-driven WDT tool should work as well. Included with the machine is a quality stainless steel and aluminum tamper, which is a nice snug fit in the basket. Otherwise, when it comes to accessories, the aftermarket options are relatively limited due to its somewhat unusual 53mm basket size. But I did pick up two of the most popular aftermarket parts for use with the Nine Barista, the IMS Precision Basket and the B Plus Puck Screen. In comparison to the stock basket, even to the naked eye, you can see that the IMS has a more condensed filter face and slightly larger perforations, which is something I tend to prefer for the more traditional types of shots the Nine Barista produces, as it tends to allow for more oils and ultrafines to slip through, resulting in a fuller bodied, richer shot. When it comes to the puck screen, as you may expect, its benefits were very similar to its use with other machines meaning it did appear to allow water to saturate the puck faster, based both on the bottomless visual of the extractions and the look of the spent pucks themselves. As you can see, the original basket cap has a lot of dead space, so water is only passing through the open portions, but the mesh screen on the other hand provides a more even introduction of water to the coffee. With that said, the benefits created by these two mods are incremental at best, and they really aren't necessary for creating really good shots on the Nine Barista. But if you're anything like me, and you're looking to squeeze every last bit of potential out of your kit, they are relatively inexpensive upgrades. Even though the Nine Barista has performed well, and is remarkably simple to use overall, there are some things worth considering if you're in the market for one. Of course, part of its draw is its ability to go from cold to espresso in about 3-6 to six minutes, which of course is much faster than your standard boiler-based machines. But unlike a standard espresso machine, pulling shots back to back requires a significant amount of time, as you need to cool down, depressurize, disassemble, clean, reprep, assemble, and reheat. So when it comes to back to back shots or dialing in, you're looking at a bit more of a time commitment, essentially all but erasing the time you saved waiting for a standard boiler machine to come to temp. And finally, the main drawback, at least in my opinion, is just a general lack of control. Even though the Nine Barista is obviously entirely capable of brewing properly tasty espresso, you're essentially locked in by its engineering to pull only 9 bar 200 degree shots. So for me, the unit performed at its best, meaning in terms of taste and overall extraction, when you used a medium roast. But when it came to getting the most out of darker or lighter coffees, I found that to be a bit more difficult with control of only one variable. When it comes to espresso machines, there's definitely no lack of options out there. But the Nine Barista is a refreshing change of pace amid the always increasingly complex technologies being continually added into new machines. Instead, it's just the basics, 200 degree water, 9 bars of pressure, and a properly tasty shot of espresso. And considering that it costs $470, it makes better shots than the closely priced Gaja Classic, and has more temperature stability than a Flare 58. So if you're into espresso only, and you're not really worried about high levels of control, this may be the machine for you. Even with its faults, which I'd say are more just natural limitations of the platform, I still find myself reaching for it pretty frequently even with a handful of other machines at my fingertips. And honestly, I feel like that's a pretty high compliment. But on that bombshell, I think it's time I start wrapping this one up, and as always, pass the conversation on to you. What are your thoughts on the Nine Barista? Is its simplicity a draw or a draw back? And can you see yourself compromising control for cost, speed, and reliability? Drop your answers to those questions and any others you may have in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram, at Spromethius, for content throughout the week. Help support the channel by considering becoming a member for exclusive access. And as always, stay caffeinated. Pony boy.